please welcome the Righteous Rainbow Choir from Giddon School, Washington Middle School, and St. Therese Elementary School.
Two, one, two. Bom dia! Bom dia! Let's everybody put your hands on your chest. And let's play right after my drum beat. On your chest, on your chest, your hands on your chest. Beautiful. Is your heart beat? Keep going. Now, everybody, please stand up and keep your heart beat. Stand up. Keep your heart beat. Let's keep your heart beat. Yes, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, let's stop. And one, and two, and one, and two, and one, and two, and one. Keep going. Yeah. Beautiful, it's your heart, it's your heartbeat. Next one, the next one, here you go. Hands up, clap, clap, hands up, heart clap, hands up, heart clap, hands up, heart clap, hands, keep it going, yeah!
left, 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 hard, 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 left, left, hard, left, 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 hard, left, left, hard, left, left, hard, left, left, hard. Left, left, hard. Left, left, hard. Left, left. Left, left. Left, left. Left, left. You may sit down. Left, left. Left, left. Left, left. Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, and students and educators of Washington State, please welcome Robert Nellens, director of the Seattle Center. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Well, welcome to Key Arena at Seattle Center. I am the director of Seattle Center, and I have the privilege of being the person responsible for this wonderful gathering place. Our mission at Seattle Center is to delight and inspire the human spirit in each person and bring together our rich and varied community. And when I look out at all of you today, I say you're do you are a beautiful example of that happening today. So thank you for that. I am delighted by the possibility of our youth and the, our youth taking care of us in, in the future. And I am inspired by the fact that each and every one of you here, each and every one of you here can have a profound, make a profound difference in our community. So I say to all of you, to His Holiness, to all of you, May peace and compassion be with you forever. Thank you. Please welcome Dr. Terry Bergeson, Washington State Superintendent of Public Instruction, and Raj Monhouse, Executive Director for Seeds of Compassion. Good morning and welcome. Good morning and welcome to Seeds of Compassion. We have asked all of you, what does compassion look like? For me, 15,000 of you are students and are educators. From 433 classrooms in Washington State, and I know millions are watching on webcast to all of the students and their educators. You are the compassion. You are the hope. You are the future of humanity. His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, will share his wisdom with you. He is here because of you. Today's day is the centerpiece of our five-day event. Enjoy every moment of this historic gathering. Now, 
It is my distinct honor to introduce you to you, Dr. Terry Bergson, who is Superintendent of Public Instruction for the state of Washington. She provided critical support to us in extending our invitation to all of you all over the state. Dr. Bergson. Thank you, Raj. Your Holiness. I just welcome from the bottom of my heart all of the children and the youth of Washington State who are represented. You speak here, you come here for a million children who are in the schools in the state of Washington. And as Raj said to you, the reason that the Dalai Lama wanted to come to us is because of the children, because you are our future. He has worked very hard and given his love and compassion for this whole weekend to all of us in Washington. And I know today he will get back a thousand times over the energy that you will give him that will inspire him and uplift him in his mission of compassion for the world. And the reason it's so important to me that compassion is at the heart of learning. You cannot learn if you cannot listen. You cannot learn if you can't respect the knowledge source and the people around you. And so what I love especially about the Dalai Lama is his scholarly spirit of inquiry combined with a compassionate heart. And the combination can change the world forever. So for your learning and your life in the future, take this in today and go home and be ambassadors of compassion to all of the children and all of the adults, and we will change the world. Thank you for being here today, and thank you for the wonderful educators who brought you. Now, it is my great pleasure to welcome to stage two amazing individuals that are guiding and inspiring us through their actions and work. Mayor Greg Nichols has provided leadership, not only running our city, but in support of environmental health of our planet, which is a clear act of compassion for our world. Mr. Nichols. And, and second person I want on the stage. And the second person I would like to be on the stage, Jessica Markowitz. And Jessica Markowitz is a seventh grader from Seattle Girls School and a seat and a seeds of compassion youth ambassador. Her, her heart is wide open in sport of others. So please join me in welcome, welcoming both of these great individuals. Good morning. Welcome to Seattle. We have 15,000 young people here today from all corners of Washington State. And for those of you who do not call Seattle home on a daily basis, welcome to Seattle, and we hope you feel it is your home at least for today, and that you feel welcome to come back over and over and over again. Compassion is a feeling that we all, I think, share from time to time. It's a feeling of sympathy for someone who is suffering. And it is combined with a feeling that you want to help, that you want to help that person who is suffering not to suffer anymore. We have seen that outpouring in our country with Hurricane Katrina that did such devastation to our brothers and sisters in New Orleans and the Gulf Coast. We saw it after the tsunami that hit Indonesia and Sri Lanka and Thailand and the whole world uh, in compassion felt the need and responded to try and help people to recover. And as a planet that now is home to six billion human beings, 
It is very important that we learn about compassion and how we put it to work each and every day in our lives. So I welcome you to the center of compassion, at least for this morning, the city of Seattle. And I want to ask each of you to join me in giving a greeting to His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. I am not a very skilled linguist, including in English, but I know two words uh, in Tibetan. And they say, may the blessings be with you. So I would like to ask you to join me in saying that. Tashi Dalek. On three, I'm going to ask you to give a great Seattle welcome to the Dalai Lama, His Holiness, in his Tibetan language. One, two, three. Tashi Dalek. Thank you. And please welcome Jessica Markowitz. Your Holiness, from all the children and youth here today, I thank you for sharing this day with us. Please know that we hope for peace for all the children and people in Tibet. Your Holiness, your presence is so special for everyone here, but especially for the children, the future leaders of the world. You lead with peace, and I see in my everyday life people who aren't peaceful, perhaps because they have not found the peace within themselves but I know every person is peaceful and compassionate in their hearts, and I know that through your words and actions, we can learn where our compassion lies. I believe change starts where you are, within your heart, within your community, your city, and within the world. We, the youth of the world, are the next generation, and I believe we can make a difference. The cycle of compassion can continue. We can pass on what we know and join with you to create compassion, present and future. On behalf of the children of of Seattle, of Washington State, and of the world, please join me in welcoming His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama. Please welcome poet and spoken word artist, Laura P. Skelly. Oh, what, what did I do? Tashi Delek, thank you. <laughs> I greet you today from the here before, when we shared, when we weren't scared, when there was no mine and yours, rather ours. This is the here that I know right now, this sacred gift, our united illumination housed within humankind, humankind, one people. We are all breathing. We all have hearts beating, and one thing is for sure. We all have something to believe in, and we continue to be and live as we begin to give. Now, let me talk to you about giving for a moment. I talked about breathing and our hearts beating. Put your hands on your hearts with me, please. Do you feel your heart beating? If you feel your heart beating, please with me will you say, Give. give. Let's do it again, say give. give. We can only continue to be and live as we begin to give. Now this we is an interconnected type of we. Not just we like you and me, but we is in the entire galaxy, every cosmo and celestial body, every intergalactic, transdimensional superstar database and virtual portal that exists within our conscious and subconscious minds, beyond space and time, throughout all of eternity, we are all going to be fine. 
We're all gonna be fine. So don't you worry about a thing, see? We were put here together for a reason, to grow and to shine, and if there's one thing I know for sure, if there is one thing I know for sure, it's that we are all breathing and we all have hearts beating. And that one thing I know is that we have something to believe in and we can continue to be and live as we begin to give with our hearts open. So I gather my hopes and watch them transform into acts of kindness like raking my neighbor's leaves. The kind of ki kindness that music makes move and the cosmic goodness of sound, the way it rains when the flowers need to grow may be the sky's pleasant way of saying hello. Like strawberry jelly and honey make a perfect peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Or like extended recess during the wassail. Like 100% pure, all natural, fruit juice popsicles in our school lunches. See, we are like each other's roommates here to keep this place safe and clean, warm and nurturing, sustained. Some of us hear our voice calling, we just need to find it. Some of us are on the journey with no direction, but there is a language, and this is a sacred language that we all speak and we all understand, a science that we all comprehend, a knowledge that we are all born with, this gift, this truth is the greatest change, a philosophy of futures untold and the desperate quickening of help and service, of help and of service. Something so sweet and dear, so this here is for the youthful elders and for the wise young teachers, for the Jedis and gurus, the yogis and sages, for the peace keepers, for the truth seekers, for the students of life and righteous leaders, for every go-getter, every learner and believer in the possibility of something better, something new and improved, which is why today I choose to give. Because we are all breathing and we all have hearts beating and one thing is for sure, we all have something to believe in and we can continue to be and live as long as long as we begin to give, as long as we choose to give and to let others be and see what they believe in for all time and every like mind amongst humankind, someone's got to give for us to believe that we can be and live. Something's got to give, someone's got to give and not just any gift like something in a package with a fancy wrapper, but something brighter and bigger and more beautiful than any tangible, holdable item or thing and this unshakable, unbreakable, precious gift is in fact the gift of compassion. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you darling. Thank you. Please welcome Brazilian recording artist and percussionist Eduardo Mendoza. The seeds of compassion is already planted in our heart. It's up to us to water. It's up to us to make it happen. It's up to us to spread. Let everybody feel your heartbeat. Let everybody now, after my drums, let's all together play in in the same heartbeat. Don't clap, only feel your heartbeat. Don't clap, feel your heartbeat. Keep going, keep going. Keep going, beautiful, it's our heart.
I want to see everybody now stand up and keep in your heartbeat. Everybody stand up, please. All the house, stand up. Keep your heart beat. Feel your heart beat now and then move it for your lap. One word, one voice, one beat, one drum. You may sit and keep your, your heartbeat on your fingers and your lap. Back to your heart. Let's home your heart beat now. With your hands over your chest. Close your eyes and completely quiet, listen to your heart beat. Open your eyes and let's water our heart. Hip hop has multiple purposes. We want to utilize dance and movement and play also to bring the children together and then to create an opportunity for a loving village. And I say compassion, you say trust, compassion. Okay, we are seeds, and guess what? The sun is shining on us, the sun is shining, and it had rained, so we got water and sunlight, and we're in really nice dirt, so. Are we going to stay in the ground? No. What are we going to do? Sprout! We're going to sprout! You could get out of your seed pot and stretch one arm up. Compassion is love. I will hip hop. I love to dance. When I say compassion, you say trust. Compassion. Compassion. And definitely uh, toddler hip hop, one of the other things that it's grounded in is um, character building. Teach them character traits like respect, like compassion, like truth, like justice, like love, right? And again, to ground them, again, developmentally in what they can understand, but as a way of like really um, providing a foundation that they can then, you know, sprout from and grow from and and be stronger individuals because what we want to produce is kids that are self-actualized, kids that see themselves as participants in the world and are change agents. And again, we want to begin as soon as we possibly can. You guys did a great job. Peace. We are honored to present the Seeds of Compassion Youth Ambassadors.
compassion to survive. We need compassion for everyday life. It's compassion that brings us together every day and every night. We need it. We need it. We want it. We want it. We use it. We use it. And we love it. We love it. We need it. We want it. We use it. We love it. We need it. We want it. We use it. We love it. I hear. <laughs> the music notes float around my ears and their ears. It makes me dream, dream. of hope, hope. and love. love. I fall down and shut my eyes. And now, light is streaming through my eyelids. I open them and see a hand in front of me. I hold onto the hand and it picks me back up to my feet again. And reality replaces the dream in a whole new lovely way. We need it, we want it, we use it, we love it, we need it, we want it, we use it, we love it. I sing because I'm happy, but I write because I feel, feel think, 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 breathe, breathe and see. see. The time for the struggle, the hate and the love and the hurt and the pain. Feel, think, breathe, see. Why should I feel discouraged? Just because you might be a bit better off than me, or because you look down on me because of who I be. And or, cause I lift every voice and I sing, matching the church bells ring, shining the light I bring, some of my poetry, oh, so mellifluously. From the heart, beat, beat, beat. Beat, beat, beat. We need compassion for hope. For love. For humanity. The world. For peace. For justice. For change. For progress. For the planet. For me. For you. For, for all of us. It's SOC thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Watch your mic. Stand up, get on your feet. With this compassion, then flow around, compassionate, beat it. And then this rap will be compassionately speaking. Speak it. You might be thinking, I rap about compassion. It's me, you know, T, you know, and we're not flashing. What's up? Our compassionate facilitate groups. We fill up circles and not use guns to shoot. We need it, we want it, we use it, we love it. We need it, we want it, we use it, we love it. We need it, we want it, we use it, we love it. You might need to close your eyes at time to find the truth. Don't be afraid to open them up to, to see, see you. you. Some people are transparent enough to, to see through. through. Seems so hard to find for me to, to see, see you. you. It's like the world is poison. We got the kill. It all starts with me. It all starts with you. It needs a new voice. My words are the IV. But in me a seed. And that's why we sing. We need it. We want it. We use it. We love it. We need it. We want it. We use it. We love it. We need it. We want it. We use it. We love it, we need it, we want it, we use it, we love it, we need it, we want it, we use it, we love it. Thank you, thank you. Peace, everybody. Please welcome back to the stage Raj Monhaus, Executive Director of Seeds of Compassion. Thank you. Thank you, folks. What a beautiful group of people who are spreading the word of compassion into our communities, into our schools. Thank you. Thank you, ambassadors, for compassion. Now, many times when we as humans face some difficulties, some hard times, we have a tendency to close our hearts. That's when the need of compassion is really there, very strong need for compassion. And in, during those moments, we need to connect with our deeper self and find that the love and beauty we all have in our hearts. 
And now it is my distinct honor to introduce a young man who maintained that deeper connection with his heart under very difficult circumstances. Human rights activist and author, Ishamil Beal. Welcome, Ishamil. Uh, thank you. Um, one, first of all, I, I'm going to speak a little bit about where I'm from, just to sort of lay the foundation. I am from Sierra Leone in West Africa, and as a child growing up, everything that I, everything that I knew as a child uh, was disrupted in this culture when the Civil War broke out. Uh, and during that war, I lost everything that was dear to me. My immediate family was killed, and I was forced to fight in the war as a child soldier. Now, I came out of that experience having two choices. I could either dwell on the negative aspect of it or I could transform that life. But one of the things that it introduced me to was another part of human nature, which is our capacity to be violent. And sometimes we have fascination with violence, especially when you're a kid. And so for me, because of that relationship to it and then coming out of it, I was able to actually see what the practical application of compassion and selflessness is and how it changed people's lives. After I came out of that experience, the people who came into my life, what they decided to do to me, how they decided to give their life for me, changed my life tremendously. To the point that after I recovered and healed from this, I decided to use my life to promote uh, uh, this idea of selflessness, this idea of people caring for each other, and for people understanding the destructive nature of violence, whether physical or verbal even. So I've dedicated my life to do this, and I'm very pleased to be here today to tell you that the work towards gaining this compassion, towards being selfless, is very difficult. But it is possible because the alternative, which is not doing anything and living our world the way it is, will not help anyone at all. Our generation, your generation, we have a lot to do. This current state of the world, what we've been left, is not in a good shape. So there's a lot that we need to do, but first, it starts with being able to listen deeply, being able to be aware of others around us, to care for them, so that when people are suffering, regardless of how little that suffering is, we're able to hear it, see it, and apply ourselves to help them in all our various capacities. And we have various talents, we have various ways we express that. But first, it starts by trying to understand our own mind, trying to find our own capacity, trying to be active in our own uh, communities, in our own countries, and in the world. Now, I believe strongly that compassion is not just the idea. There has to be sort of an action part of it. Just saying that we are compassionate is not enough. It's actually exercising it in each moment of our lives. One of them is being very patient. One of them is learning to forgive. I can tell you about forgiveness because I come from a place where, because of what happened to me as a young child, I was very angry at the world, at people, for many, many years. I could not trust people. I could not allow my people to help me because I distrusted, distrusted humanity. But when I gave my heart a chance to do so again, to begin to care for people, to begin to know that through forgiveness, I'm able to understand what happened to me, be in a position to prevent that from happening to other people, I was able to begin healing. I was able to actually do what I'm doing now, which is the courage to resist violence. For a lot, a lot of young people, you're in middle school, high school, everyone wants to be tough. Everyone doesn't want to be think of as weak. But I want to leave you with this thing. The courage that it takes to resist violence is actually a strength that is much better and preferred, in my opinion, than to act. When somebody pushes you around, the natural reaction is to push back. But what it takes not to push back, but to think about what that might lead to, how it is destructive, violence, the nature of it, what it does to the human spirit, that is courage. And that is what I want you to have in the back of your mind as you live here. And lastly, is to have hope. Hope is a form of courage, in my opinion. It's a form of strength that allows us to actually not only be compassionate, 
but to be selfless, to be in a position to help other people and to care for other people deeply. So I hope that when we leave here today, what we've heard here, what we've moved here, we can share this experience with other people. And having the presence of the Dalai Lama here would also allow us to continue to have that hope, that strength, that our world can change from what it is, that we have it in our hands, we can do our part. We don't need to wait until we're older to be compassionate or to make that action to be compassionate. We can start here by sharing your lunch if somebody else doesn't have it, by breaking your pencil and giving half to somebody else in your classroom if they don't have it, by caring for other people when something is going on with them, even if it's by just sitting with them and listening to them. So I want to thank you for having me here. And uh, I want you to consider me as part of the Youth Ambassador for Peace because that is what all of our role should be in this world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.